Anna Del Rey just released her new album and it's messing me up in all the best ways. Can someone just like come lay in a field with me and listen to this beautiful majestic crap? <laughs> channel for today's video I'm doing another video in the adulting 101 series because it has been so highly requested in today's video I'm gonna be talking all about how to break bad habits I myself recently I would say over the last three months have actually nixed and quit so many bad habits that I had and not that I was like terrible or anything but there were so many habits that I really wanted to change and so I told, like, I, I kind of went through these certain steps in order to change them or get rid of them or replace them with better habits and be a happier and healthier person. And with doing that, I was actually shocked by how much I stuck to it and how much my whole lifestyle and my whole perspective on a lot of things started to change throughout that time. I decided to compile a little list of things that I found helped me quit all of my bad habits, which reminds me one of the things that I don't have for this coffee talk is a coffee because I one quit caffeine and two I do drink decaf but I already have my one decaf for the day so like I said we're not gonna give into those habits that I had before so if you guys want to know all of my steps when it comes to breaking bad habits then just keep watching okay so tip number one is obviously to identify the habits that you want to break I kept on falling into these pits of being unmotivated uninspired depressed down low and just feeling like I had no zest or thrive towards life and I would constantly be down on myself. I would be super negative, like my self-talk was very negative. It got so bad that at a point I had to just sit down and brainstorm what it was that was causing so much toxic turmoil in my life and for me to feel the way that I was feeling because I knew that my life was great. I knew that I was surrounded by so many things I was grateful for and I just felt like there was some sort of roadblock in between me and feeling happier. What I started to notice is a lot of the things that I was writing down I would look at them and be like, even though I get some sort of satisfaction out of this, I know that this is bad for me. Or even though I know this should bring me a sense of happiness, I'm not doing it because I'm lazy or I'm unmotivated. So I basically identified a bunch of habits, even though they were bringing me short-term happiness in the long term, it wasn't going to make me happy or routines and things that I wish I was doing or the person that I kind of wish I was and could very well be, but I wasn't letting myself be that person. An example of that would be like, I fell off of working out for a while and I remember thinking, that's not who I am. Like I love having the habit of working out because it makes me feel good, but I'm not letting myself be that person. I was staying up really late and I was doing things like tiny little habits that I knew were detrimental to my overall happiness, but brought me a sense of joy or comfort in that moment. A good way to do this is to take a piece of paper, take a journal, and just start writing down behaviors or habits that you have, despite whether they're good or bad, and then take a good look at them. Start identifying the good behaviors and habits versus the bad behaviors and habits, and that'll be an easy way for you to notice, okay, these are the habits that I wanna change. So yeah, number one, the most important, obviously, is you can't change a habit until you identify it. Step number two, and this can be a harder step, is to identify why and when. When did this habit start in your life? Was it years ago, months ago, weeks ago? At what point in your life did this start to become a habit for you and then ask yourself why did it become a habit because no matter what habits we have whether they're good or bad they give us some sort of gratification whether we're seeking comfort whether we're seeking escape everything we do we have a reason for it so we have to determine the why when it comes to the habits that we have a lot of the times our habits can stem from stress and boredom if you're bored you might start creating some bad habits in order to fulfill your boredom or what's worse and a harder one to deal with is stress and I find for me a lot of my habits formed from stress like whenever I felt anxious or stressed out I would start to binge eat shop and drop money that I on aimless stupid things just to fulfill a sense of comfort foods on the way like that's gonna bring me comfort I'm not gonna do any of my responsibilities today because I'm too stressed out and so that was where habits started to form for me was the stress and this can go a lot deeper when you're looking at the why stress might just be like I was feeling a little bit stressed out from one thing, but when you really dig down deep, it goes all the way back to family situations, circumstances surrounding our reality, 
Um, it can get pretty deep when you start to look at your reasoning for bad habits and where they come from and why they happen. Definitely take a good chunk of time to kind of think about that because if you don't establish your why it is that we, we do these bad habits, then you're not going to be able to fix them because the why is super important along with the when. If you're struggling to figure out why, uh, a lot of times when we look at when they began, that can also be a very good indicator of what was going on around that time that created those bad habits. Step number three is another why and another identification and it is to identify why you want to change it. I mean a lot of the times it's super easy like I want to be a healthier person or I want to be a happier person but the more detailed you get about this the easier it's going to be for you to stick to your habit. An example for me is I really wanted to quit my habit of overspending when I felt stressed out or like stress shopping. After I figured out when it started and why I did it I also need to identify why I didn't want to do it anymore and this why is what kept me from going back to that bad habit. So when I wrote down that I have a goal that I want to buy property or I want to own land or things like that, it, that became my why. It was I don't want to spend stupid money on something that's only going to bring me a short sense of comfort. I want a long term comfort. I want to know and feel mature for spending my money wisely and for you know, dealing with my stress in a better way. And those things became my why. And writing that down, anytime you feel like you're gonna fall back into that bad habit, look at it and remind yourself why it is you don't wanna go back to that bad habit. And they don't even have to be big, like, detrimental habits either. It can easily be like, I wanna start going to bed earlier. And your reason why can be, I don't wanna feel tired through the day tomorrow. I wanna to be more well rested. I wanna take better care of my body. I want to give myself that time to relax and recoup. I want to be less stressed. I go from very small big bad habits to very big bad habits. Step number four is you can't get rid of a habit without replacing the habit. So let's say for instance you wanted to quit smoking. You're going to have to replace your want or your need or the time you would spend smoking with something else. So if you smoke and you know the reason why you smoke is because you're stressed, then you need to find something else that can help with your stress and give you that same sort of gratification you get from smoking. Poor eating habits is a good example too, you know. For me, when I would get really, really stressed out, I would order in food or I would make myself like a disgusting amount of comfort food and I would eat it all. So when I looked at that habit where like I would overeat or order in food or just kind of give into this like bad habit even when I wasn't hungry, what was I actually looking for? And for me, I was looking for a sense of relief or comfort from my stress. So I had to find something else I could do whenever I felt stressed and needed a relief or a sense of comfort instead of just ordering food or eating a disgusting amount of food. And so anytime I got anxious or stressed out, I would throw my headphones in and I would draw something instead. And for the first few times you do this and you replace your bad habits with good ones, it's not going to be that easy. You're still going to be tempted to give into that bad habit, but like I said, that's when you go back to your why. Basically what I'm saying is you need to replace your bad habit with a good habit that gives you the same benefit or gratification that your old habit used to give you. So tip number five is stop enabling yourself. You need to get rid of all of the things that cause you to create the habits that you do. I wanted to start waking up earlier and having like this full morning routine and it has been one of the best decisions I've ever made. I mean, I've never been one that slept in very late but I knew that every time I ever forced myself to wake up at 6.15 in the morning or 6 a.m. in the morning, it brought this sense of like joy in me that I always wanted to feel and I was the only thing standing in my way from getting that sense of joy. So instead of enabling myself by keeping my phone beside my bed, I started putting my phone on the other side of the room, which forced me to get up and out of bed to turn off my alarm every morning. Get rid of the junk food in your house. Stop going to the bars if you're trying to not drink as much. Stop going to the mall if you keep spending. And this might even go as deep as surrounding yourself with different people. If the people you're around tend to enable you or trigger you to kind of create bad habits that they may also have, it might be a smart idea to either join together, join forces and you know, not do those habits together or start hanging out with people that kind of have the lifestyle or fill the habit that you're looking to seek. Hang out with people that exercise or like to, you know, get out there and be active if you're looking to be a more active person. We need to get rid of the things that enable us and kind of trigger the bad habits to happen. And in all, we kind of need to change our lifestyle if we're really looking to change our habits. Which leads me to tip number six, and it is to tell somebody the habits that you're looking to change. I don't think I would have been able to change 
half the habits that I worked on, if not all of them, if I didn't tell like Greg, if I didn't tell my sister, if I didn't tell my friends. When I was quitting caffeine, I remember everybody being like, what are you doing? Kaylin quitting caffeine does not make sense. And I remember so many people being like, are you sure you're gonna be able to do that? I know I will because one, you've doubted me, and two, I've told you, so now if I fail, you're gonna know that I failed. And that was something that kept me so on par with not drinking coffee and it was something that helped me so much and hey if you don't have that leave a comment down below tell me in the comment section the habits that you're planning on breaking after this video and honestly I will answer back to you I will come back and make sure that you guys are holding to it like if I don't answer you right away I'm gonna be answering you within this week and so I want to know what habits you're breaking tweet it to me keep me posted come back and continue to write in the and the little, you know, what is that thing called? The train of comments that we'll have back and forth. Tip number seven is anytime you can, visualize your success. When I'm going to bed at night, I always kind of picture my day tomorrow. Picture myself waking up nice and early, picturing myself super happy in the sun in the morning before a lot of people are even awake. Brought me such a sense of joy and fulfillment that when my alarm went off in the morning, that was kind of the last thought I had with going to bed. So I would get up and all of a sudden that kind of thought became my reality. Even making things like a dream board or writing down your goals on a daily basis. Every morning sit down and write down you know how your perfect day would go or write down all of the things that you're looking to accomplish and picture the success you feel picture like try and feel it in your bones like as if it's already been given to you or already been promised to you think of all of the things that'll come with that habit like if it's working out that you want to start doing or eating healthy picture yourself in a two three months from now picture how you feel how you'll look like how fulfilled you're gonna be and think of all the things that are gonna come your way if you stick to this habit. Even making this a habit, visualizing your success, is honestly going to be one of the most beneficial things in your life despite whether you're doing it for habits or despite whether you're doing it for goal setting, despite whether you're doing it for your dreams and ambitions later on in life. This is like a form of meditation that I'm not kidding you will not only bring you such a sense of excitement for life and excitement for all the things you're doing, but it'll also, honestly, it works in the sense of the law of attraction. It'll start to also gravitate those things to you faster. When you kind of visualize an action and a reaction, it causes your brain that when you end up doing that action, it already has envisioned a reaction to it, so you're more prone to go to that reaction. So for instance, if I picture myself waking up in the morning and being like, oh, I really don't wanna wake up, that's gonna suck, I'm gonna be so tired, I'm gonna be so unhappy. Odds are when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to think it sucks. I'm gonna be so tired, I'm gonna be so unhappy. Versus if I'm going to bed thinking, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and I'm gonna be so happy and I'm gonna you know, put on some good music and I'm gonna light candles and it's gonna feel so good, when I wake up in the morning, I'm gonna get up, all of a sudden I'm gonna feel a little happy, I'm gonna start lighting the candles, I'm gonna start playing the music, and it's automatically my brain is there because I created that pathway for it to connect my action to my reaction. This type of visualization will change your life, just do it. Tip number eight, and I've kind of touched on this a lot already in this video, is to think long-term versus short-term. When I read the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, excuse my language, there was a huge chunk that has always stuck with me, and it was such an aha moment, and it was short-term gratification versus long-term gratification and this is huge when it comes to habit forming. We're gonna get that short-term gratification from abandoning responsibilities, bringing us a sense of comfort now versus later, bringing us a sense of enjoyment now versus later, instead of actually the long-term gratification where, okay, if I sleep in and I skip my workout and I eat like crap all day and I just watch Netflix and I don't go to work, all of those things in the moment might feel good, but odds are a week of that, two weeks of that, three weeks of that, you're gonna start feeling depressed, you're gonna start feeling unmotivated, you're gonna find yourself in a rut, and you're gonna feel that you have no sense of self-worth because you've been treating yourself like crap. So start thinking about the long-term gratification you want. Is it saving money for something in the future? Is it adopting the type of lifestyle or the type of characteristics of somebody you think is super motivational? You have to Think of that instead of thinking of the comfort you're going to feel right in this moment by giving into your bad habit. When we do things that bring us a longer sense of gratification versus a shorter sense of gratification, we retrain our brains to understanding that, you know what, it might be a little uncomfortable for me to get up early. It might be a little uncomfortable for me to go work out because I really don't want to put my body through that. It might be a little uncomfortable for me to eat the potatoes and the salad and the corn instead of ordering a vegan pizza, but I know it's going to make me feel so much better in the long run. And eventually 
eventually these things will start to be things that I crave because that longer term gratification will start to feel so much better than the shorter term gratification that I'll never want to screw with short term gratification again. And last but not least, make a plan. So now that we've gone through all of those steps and we understand why and how and when and what and all of the W's that come with quitting bad habits and starting new ones, we need to make some sort of plan. So for me, I am like a numbers person. I need to have a visualization. I need to have a beginning and an end. I need to be able to see where I want to be by a certain time. A 60 day no coffee challenge, a 30 day whole foods challenge, like a whole week of not spending more than a certain amount of money and doing things like that, creating these little challenges for yourself, that sets you up for success because when you fail to plan, you can plan to fail. Such a cliche quote, but I had to throw it in here because it's so true. And this is actually going to become a theme on my channel because I have written down a whole page of challenges like good habit or healthy habit challenges and I'm gonna start doing them vlog style with you guys it's gonna be a series that's gonna be coming up to my channel but doing that and I'll be doing it with you guys like tell me some challenges you want down below because I can totally fulfill them and we can do them together but coming up with that kind of plan is going to help you start to adopt these habits in a way that give you a sense of gratification and like accomplishment pick a start date pick an end date Get as detailed as possible, write it all down, put it up on a whiteboard, put it up on your wall. It feels so good in your bones that you'll never want to stop. So I hope you guys enjoyed this coffee talk. Let me know down below what you think or let me know down below the habits you're planning on breaking and what you plan on replacing them with or what your plan of execution is or like the challenges you guys want to see. Keep all that good stuff down below. I'm going to try and answer as many of you guys as possible and I'm going to keep coming back to this video. And other than that, I love you guys to the moon and back. I hope this video you know, helped you guys in some sort of way. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye guys.